Welcome to Straight Talk with Sandra Reich. Are you trying to master the game of life without success? There are secrets and strategies to living your best life. We'll share some of them with you on today's show. Take advantage of this series to become an expert at relationships. All relationships. It's time to live the life that you deserve to live. Now, here's your host, Sandra Reich. And welcome to Straight Talk with Sandra Reich, a show about living your very best life. Big show today. You tuned in the right day because it's change your brain, change your life. And it sounds so trite and simplistic. It's not trite or simplistic at all, but it can be done. And it's exciting stuff. I want to talk about it and I want to talk, I want to get the word out because um, a lot of people walk into my office and say, well, this is just my personality or this is the way, this is just my bad luck and that's just the way it goes. And one of the things that we know, uh, which is really exciting and what's really hot in psychology now is neuroplasticity. So, it, you know, let's just talk about what that means. It means basically that um, we can change neuronal pathways in our brain, meaning that when you have a thought, it fires from point A to point B. And by changing those thoughts, we can create new ways of thinking and by changing new and having new ways of thinking therefore we can change our life so I hope that intrigued you because um, personally I feel that this is the story of my life I feel that um, I had neuronal pathways um, that I learned in my family of origin as we all do and uh, they weren't really working for me I'm not going to lie. Life was not so good. We're going back maybe 20, 25 years ago. It wasn't going that well in terms of my relationships. It wasn't going that well in terms of my career. It wasn't going that well in terms of my happiness. And as I've learned new things in my life and taught my brain through some of the techniques we're going to talk about today to think differently, and it is a bit like exercising. It's a lot of hard work. I'm not going to lie. Um, slowly but surely, my entire life changed, and I'm very excited about this topic as a result because I now have a pretty good life. So I want. I thought to myself, who am I going to invite on this show to talk about um how you change your brain and who's a real expert on this topic. And uh, I didn't have to look far because there's a brilliant psychologist on our team at the Montreal Center for Anxiety and Depression, a good friend, someone I admire enormously. Now, let me take you back to about three, four years ago. We were having a meeting at the clinic, and I'll tell you a little bit about her. And we, I was teaching her about some stuff I learned on neuroplasticity, um, at a conference and she got so excited about it that she went and did extensive training and she's going to tell you today about that training and about how she applied it to her own life and changed her life. But let me tell you who we're talking about. So Anna Maria Tosco is a licensed psychologist and she's a fabulous teacher of psychology. She teaches all sorts of people. She's very sought after at the clinic. Let me tell you, it's not easy to get an appointment with her. And she's got a reputation for being brutally honest yet compassionate and very avant-garde insight into the causes and consequences of people's bad habits. She is also the famous sassy psychologist. You may have heard of her, and she is sassy. So welcome back to Straight Talk, Anna Maria. Sandra, so much. Thank you so, so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. We have so much fun and all plus one of my favorite topics. Oh my God, it's such a huge topic for you. So let's go back to that meeting like three, four years mm-hmm. ago when I did talk to you about like, I had done some work with um, Joe Dispenza, Dr. Joe Dispenza yes. um, on learning about this uh, neuroplasticity and changing your brain and your eyes became like saucers. And the next thing I know, you were flying off to study with him. What happened to you at that meeting that made you want to learn this so badly? Sandra, it inspired me so much because it was just the, the science behind it all to know that and kind of on the coattails of what you were saying before to know that you can actually change the structure of your brain this is not a joke this is super powerful stuff in the same way that if you were going to learn the piano if I took an MRI scan of your brain before learning the piano and then an MRI scan of your brain after learning the piano can we agree that you would see a change of course not a big entire change of your structure and function of the brain but a change yes so what neuroplasticity told me was that if I'm, if I'm not interested in learning the piano, that's fine. But if I'm interested 
in, um, if I'm interested in changing my habits, my habits of thought, my bad habits of thought, and maybe we'll talk about what those habits were exactly, mm-hmm. you know, I was a hot mess, P.S. <gasps> um, yeah, so I had these bad habits of thought, and then to know that I could actually change my brain to facilitate healthier thoughts. This is very, very powerful stuff. So to me, it was a no-brainer. <laughs> Pun. Uh, it was a no-brainer to basically say, hey, um, I'm going to change my maladaptive thoughts and make them permanent, basically. Okay. Because the brain is not hardwired as we once thought. The brain is plastic and okay. the brain can change. And thus the term <laughs> neuroplasticity. Exactly. Okay. Yes. So, so what does it really mean, neuroplasticity, for yeah. everybody to understand? Of course. So like I tell my clients, yeah, like I tell my clients, like I tell um, my students, the brain is not hardwired it's plastic so essentially it can change even you know once upon a time they thought it was almost impossible you know we can sure we can do an arm transplant but we can't really you know heal the central nervous system as it turns out we can heal the central nervous system so that's essentially what neuroplasticity is the fact that the brain can change and I think that it's super important to fuel the um, listen it fueled my therapeutic work and it fuels the therapeutic work of clients don't you agree what do you think do you like you know to inspire them to, you know, to actually do their homework to say, hey, your brain's going to change if you do this. You know, yes. What do you think? Well, no, I think I, I'm glad you're asking that question. I think it's extremely important. Um, and I think what you're saying, if I could add to that, is it puts some responsibility on the clients. Mm-hmm. It's I do equate it to exercise. Yes, you have yes. to lift your weights every day mm-hmm. or you're not going to have muscles. So if you want to change the way your brain thinks, people say to me, well, yes, but I go back to the same thoughts. Well, you have a choice. So let's break that down a little bit, Anna Maria. Please. So if, if, if you have a thought that says I'm a loser, you know, of course, everything goes wrong for me and you're learning your plasticity, then you have to be able to say to yourself that you're going to change that thought and not keep saying I'm a loser, right? Right. Well, I, I love that you said that because there are different ways that you know, therapists can help clients along with how do I change my thoughts and then practice them relentlessly, religiously. Sorry, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's no, hard work. It's very relentless, and I'm, I, I, I don't sugarcoat it because if, if you're listening right now and you want to change your life, you can. But you do have to be relentless about it. So you have to keep taking your new statement. And people might think these are affirmations. I don't think of these as affirmations. Exactly, right. I think it's much deeper than that. So, you know, like if we take the example of the loser, loser is a behavioral concept. So you could do loserish behavior, mm-hmm. but that doesn't make you a loser. So the therapist's job is to teach that. Yeah. That's loserish behavior, perhaps, like breaking my phone today or mm-hmm. getting <laughs> which happened five minutes before going on air. Anyways, okay, it could be loserish behavior, but it doesn't make you a loser. So I have to buy into the concept, but that's not enough because my automatic, my neuronal system, every time I break something is going to go back to I'm a loser. So now I need to challenge it and keep saying, no, 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 I'm not a loser. That was maybe loserish behavior, but I'm not a loser. I love that you said that because on the coattails of that, essentially what's happening in your brain, I like to call it, I'm... I, I, I like to, I hope I coined the term, I don't know, but I like to call it neuronal bullying. It's yours, that I term. I hope it is. I think it is. Let's TM, copyright that. Yeah, <laughs> neuronal, neuronal bullying. Neuronal bullying. What on earth does that mean? Well, like you just said, you know, I'm a loser, I'm a loser, I'm a loser, I'm a loser. Okay, fine. Then you decide to, well, my therapist I is I love influenced. neuronal bullying. I like that. Yeah, it's like my therapist is, is uh, inspiring me or motivating me to, uh, to change my thoughts. There are a few ways to do it, and we can talk more about that too later, but you're giving a great CBT technique. Yeah. And what to do. And then you you attempt to do it and you you practice, but then you're like, this is lame. I don't know how to do this. Um, I, I want to go back to how I was thinking. I don't buy this. And here's what I tell my clients. I, I, can, I can't believe this is something I'm using. I never thought I would, but fake it till you make it at first. I'm sorry. I love that. When you when you want to learn the piano, you don't want to practice all the time. Okay, so Anna Maria, I have a challenge for you. Right, you know, we're it. just about to go to the break, so I'm going to ask sure. people to think about their challenges. But right before we came on the radio, we were talking about when we go up to somebody oh, yeah. and ask someone, you know, to come on the radio or ask someone something, like asking a favor of someone. And... Um, how that's difficult, especially as women, that's difficult for you. And yeah. it's difficult for many of us women. You Guilty. Know? I was telling Sandra that I need to yeah. beast up a little bit and do some more of that. So stuff. fake it till you make it would be relevant here. Yeah, sure. So it would be almost like you'd put on a role, like you're Oprah. Yes. I'm Oprah. 
Exactly. And I'm asking somebody. Yeah. And I so know you, you I have know. to, or else you're neuronally bullying yourself. Oh it, my God, I'm really on this. And I love this. Yeah. I love this. Yes. So you could do it, but you'd have to adopt a fake it till you make it. Yes. And I'll tell you, I think that's the secret right there. I like fake it till you make it. And I, I, when I was younger, I would have never thought this is fake. I don't feel it. I don't buy it. I have to do everything that, you know, feels, feels authentic. authentic. Right? <laughs> Dang. Yeah. That was fun. Um, but yeah, I used to, but then at the same time, if you want to train your brain to something different in the same way you go to the gym, yeah. in the same way you learn the piano or any instrument or a dance, you're going to have to do things that are uncomfortable and maybe are not authentic to your body yeah. at the time. How else are you going to change your brain patterns? Yeah. Sorry, that's not it. easy. That's it. You have to do it though. Oh mm-hmm. God, I love this. Okay. So we're going to come back. We're going to talk about bad habits. We're going to talk about, um, Faking more on faking until you make it on the, and I like to say the just do it. I know you have some questions for me. I have some questions for you. And I want you guys listening to think about an area in your life that you want to change because Anna Marie is also going to talk about some incredible techniques, including meditation that can be really powerful for creating things in your life that you couldn't have possibly imagined. There's a lot of scientific research on this now. So it's pretty hot stuff. And I definitely practice it. I know Anna Maria has practiced it. I think she practices it currently. Mm -hmm. Um, So we'll be right back with straight talk with Sandra Rich. Your life, your health, your network. You're listening to Voice America Health and Wellness. Spa Munari is a full service wellness day spa located at the heart of West Island, Quebec. Submerge yourself in beauty with one of our many treatments, specially catered to your needs. We offer facials, manicures, pedicures, hair removal, massages, body treatments, and so much more. Enjoy our ultimate relaxation experience with our spa packages. We offer a men's menu as well. Call us today to book your next appointment at 514 695 5040 or visit us on the web at spamunari.com. That's 514-695-5040 or spamunari.com. Join the therapist who is affectionately known as the couple whisperer, Sandra Reich, on her famous couple retreats and change your life forever. Sandra offers couple retreats in beautiful locations several times a year that can radically change your love life. Couples describe her retreats as life-changing. Regain that loving feeling. Bring your intimacy to a new level and rediscover excitement and joy. Find out more at helpforanxietydepression.com or call 514-796-4357. We all want love and safety. Now you can have it. Call 514-796-4357 or helpforanxietydepression.com. Change your life forever with the latest cutting-edge products for home study treatment for anxiety, featuring the clinical director of the Montreal Center for Anxiety and Depression and host of Straight Talk, Sandra Reich. Sandra is joined by top therapist Georgia Dow in this revolutionary anxiety videos therapy series. Thousands of people have benefited from this scientifically proven treatment approach. Isn't it time you chose yourself? Visit anxiety-videos.com right now. That's anxiety-videos.com and change your life forever. A fresh look at today's health. Voice America Health & Wellness. You are listening to Straight Talk with Sandra Reich. To connect with the program today, please call 1-866-472-5792. Again, that's 1-866-472-5792. You may also send an email to info at helpforanxietydepression.com. Now, back to Straight Talk. Here's Sandra Reich. We're back with the lovely Anna Maria Tosco talking about changing your brain and changing your life. There's so much to say. Even on the break, we were talking about all these things. I want to give a little shout out to uh, Canadian neuropsychologists. And we are Canadians here, so we love to give a little shout out to Canadians. Donald Hebb, he first came up with something called Hebb's Axiom, which says that neurons that fire together wire together. What the heck does that mean, Anna Maria Tosco? <laughs> neurons that fire together wire together, huh? Yeah. So, like, so essentially, when, when, when you're thinking, when you have the well 
uh, when we're talking about neuroscience, essentially when you are uh, uh, creating new neurons, um, they work together. And essentially when they work together, they're connected. So, I mean, it just kind of enhances the experience of, uh, of neuroplasticity. It enhances yeah. the connection. So when you have a thought, neurons connect, which is it's so interesting because when you think a new thought, actually when it becomes a habit, it connects. There, I have this video that I show my students, and it's really cool because you can actually see the neurons connecting when you learn something new, when you um, or you're studying, let's say, and then all of a sudden you have an aha moment. Well, there there are certain neurons that are connecting, you know, and that will kind of forge that new thing that you learn. It'll make it uh, well, you know, permanent for as long as you use that information. So it's actually very very cool. Mm. That is important, and I, you know, I think it's important that people understand that, and that we can change, therefore, the pathway and etch a new way of thinking in our brain. That's what you're saying, right? Yes, definitely. Okay, so imp- let's go back to the fact that, um, you know, what happens to the average person when they're stuck, for example, in bad habits of thoughts? I yeah, bad habits of thought are wonderful, and I th- I'm sure everybody, anybody who's listening right now, can um, can start to piece together what their bad habits of thoughts are. Because I love telling this to my clients, I love telling this to my students. You have bad habits, whether you like it or not. What do you think, Sandra? You know about clients and anybody you meet, don't we all have them? <laughs> these bad habits of thought? We all have bad habits of thoughts, including me and you. Yeah, and I think yes. therapists have bad habits of thought too. And um, but I guess what you're bringing up, uh, I guess what I would add to that is the first step is to acknowledge your bad habits of thought so you need to know what are your bad habits of thought yes and I personally feel you tell me if you feel if you feel this way but that there are cat major categories with you know high functioning adults you know people yeah. who can get out of bed yeah. go to work do their thing and the categories usually fall under in my experience having trouble with your relationship trouble with your job um, trouble with money you know, those are kind of three huge categories, and I'm going to argue that in one of those categories, and I'm sure there are others, I'm just thinking about big categories right now, yeah. that you have bad habits of thought on. For example, if you are having relationship problems, you might be saying, nobody wants me, you know, this relationship is terrible, why can't I ever find anybody, all the good ones are taken, people always leave me, it's up to you to call yourself out. If you are jobless or always having trouble in your job, you might be saying things like, there's no job I'm well suited for, I'm never happy anywhere, all of my colleagues are, you know, hate me, I'll never find a job I love, all this stuff. Well, let's break it down to, let, let's give an example, mm-hmm. like, I'm willing to give an example of um, a bad habit thought, and I think maybe it would be a good idea if you gave one too, Great, so sure. I'll give one right off the bat, is that, like, I have a very bad habit thought of, I didn't get enough done in a day, right? That's like, that's my problematic thought. And I like I, if I feed it, it just keeps going. And it's it's now I grew up with very high standard parents who if you got a 95 in school, Mm -hmm. what happened to the missing five marks. Mm -hmm. So I've integrated that into my brain that if I get, you know, you know, me, I get a lot done in a Uh day. Yes. I you know, I'm, I'm, (laughs) So are you telling me that this is a cognitive distortion that you have? It is a cognitive distortion. So if, if I can break it down. Yeah, in terms break it of, down for our guests. In our terms listeners. of what's happening from a neurological like, Be my perspective. therapist, please. Okay. I always wanted you as my therapist. <laughs> so you have this bad habit of thought, okay? And so this thought creates um, release of certain neurotransmitters, which, you know, communicate with the body. And then your endocrine system releases hormones. And your body then reevaluates and says, actually, Sandra, can you tell me what emotion do you experience as a result of that thought? Can we say oh. Helplessness, overwhelmment. Yeah, helplessness, overwhelmment, some anxiety and stress, and sometimes even a little bit of downness, like, oh, I didn't get enough done. I I didn't, I was, because again, the value attached to it is Mm -hmm. that the more you get done, the more valuable. Right. right? So I'm going to, I'm going to hook on to those feelings of emptiness or sadness. So the body reevaluates and the body says, okay, well, we're feeling sad. Um, and the, the body is going to produce more of those sad, helpless, overwhelmed thoughts, which will then produce those same neurotransmitters and those same hormones. So what do you think happens if you are producing these neurotransmitters and these hormones that facilitate the depression? You are going to, and here's the kicker, and it's so fascinating, get, Keep going. get addicted to them. This okay. is called emotional addiction. Okay. And this is why neuro, neuroplasticity is so important because we're actually addicted to our bad habits. Addicted? It's crazy to think this, but this is what's happening. Because you're secreting these neuro... Listen, this pattern of you um, ha- not having enough time. You're yes. secreting the same neurotransmitters, the same hormones over and over and over again to the point where your body 
your cells, the receptor sites on your cells are ready to take in those, those molecules of depression. Your thoughts create that emotion and your body is ready for that kind of emotion. And so to the point where you actually crave them if you don't have them. So you're saying that people can crave feeling helpless, overwhelmed and stressed. If they've created a lifelong pattern, absolutely. This is called emotional addiction, which is why neuroplasticity is so important. Okay. So if I'm addicted. Yes to this way of thinking. Let's take it one step further. So I'm going to go back to the fact that I suppose a very important piece is for me to acknowledge that I may be addicted. But I think that people will, I I wouldn't have any problem with that. I'm I'm an addict. I am Sandra. I'm addicted to Mm -hmm. thinking it's not enough. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I think most people will resist that in therapy and say, no, no, no. Why on earth would I be addicted to a negative thought? That's been my experience. So how, I mean, you know, I think this is a question for both of us is, you know, I don't find it that difficult to get there. I don't know if you find it that difficult I to get there. I love it. I, I actually like to find out something like that. But how do we get people there who can't take in the idea that they might be creating their own problem? That's really interesting, Sandra, because uh, in terms of neuroplasticity and this kind of work, it won't apply like to individuals who have this problem. It is important for us therapists to get people to go there. But it, this, neuro, the, it, this neuroplasticity kind of therapeutic work is, is not going to happen with those people. Oh, I totally get that. So um, it's not going to happen. So it's, you're saying that they're stuck at that moment. Yeah. Okay. At that moment, you're, basically, you're going to have to apply other therapeutic techniques, in my opinion, Wait, I mean, which you're super good at. I think you just gave us a beautiful meeting on strategies on how to do that, how to get people there, how to get people to acknowledge their problems. Okay, so if you're listening and you've got this problem, you definitely have to start by acknowledging there's a problem and accepting the premise that we're putting out there that you are actually feeding the problem. And Straight Talk listeners, this is a very hard thing to accept that you could be feeding your problem, but yeah, in most cases we're feeding our problems. So, um, you know, it basically what happens is um, you have a thought and you keep the thought going, continues to keep feeding. So why do people do this? Like, why? Why would I keep a thought alive that's hurting me? Well, one of the things, of course, is, you know, why would a heroin addict continue? And it's because they're actually getting a hit off of it. This is what's really interesting is if, if let's say, um, a single person comes up to me, like a, a client, and says, you know, I'm always attracting the wrong men or I'm always attracting the wrong women, and they have this kind of bad habit or this emotional addiction. The truth is they're actually going to crave those bad relationships. They're actually going to crave those bad, I mean, those bad people for them or whatever, because their body wants a hit of that depression. Their body wants a hit of that frustration. I know it sounds kind of out there, but it's so interesting to consider the science behind it all, which is why we have to work so hard against our own biology. This is what the neuroplasticity work is all about. So to answer your question again, I personally think it's the addiction part of it. What do you think? I I agree. Basically, I agree. I agree that it is the addiction part. And I think that we're just getting, we are creatures of habits and we go back to the same thoughts over and over again. So listen, we're we're talking about neuroplasticity. Um, Tell me, Sandra, what about neuroplasticity is so important for you to teach your therapists and your clients um well you know again i think the idea that if there's a we can scientifically prove this without a doubt i think forces clients to take some responsibility in terms of changing things and uh, that there is a chance to change it that we are not victims so to speak of our personalities so the uh, <laughs> this is just who i am doesn't does not fly it just doesn't fly so yeah we have choice you know I'm very big on choice we have choice every minute of the day so I my phone broke an hour before this show I'm pretty upset about it I'm you know leaving on a trip I need a phone Um, but the stress factor of my phone not working and my reaction to it is completely in my own power even though I'm not necessarily nailing this right now I'm pretty stressed (laughs) about it Um, it is 100% of my power I have a choice I could go "Ah!" Or I can freak out. So I have choices. So in terms of clients, that's extremely important. Is that what you tell your clients? I love that you brought up choice. I think we were having a conversation about choice the other day. Like choice is super important with this work. When we're talking about actually changing your brain, you have to use choice because you don't want to, you won't want to do it. You won't want to practice something new. You won't want to practice anything out of your comfort zone. So that's why choice 
so, so important in all of this. Uh, so well said, Anna Maria. And I think that you're really inspiring people um, on how to change their life. So do you, before we go to break, when if somebody's inspired and wants to like do this whole thing, this neuroplasticity thing, do you suggest that they work with somebody or is this something you, you know, like, Hmm. How do people start this process? Right. So I think that uh, definitely books help anything. There's so many. And I have references here for anybody who wants, of course. But check it out. Look it up online. Check out books. Check out the experts, of course. And if you need help, you know, you can definitely go see uh, a therapist. Um, But once you seize it and once you understand it, the work is yours. And I know, I'm sure we'll talk about it. I, I do my neuroplasticity work in the car. Oh, I'll tell you. Oh, my God. I'm dying to know what that means. <laughs> yeah. You do your neuroplasticity work yeah, in the car? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. We oh can my talk God. about it for sure. Okay. Before we go to break, I do want to give a little shout out to our sponsor, which is Spa Maneri. And I don't know if you know this, Anna Maria. It's pretty awesome. Talk about changing your brain. You know, when you go take care of your body, okay, it changes your brain. Did you know that? If you take care of your body, free-floating thought when you're getting a massage or something Mm. is now been shown to have incredible creativity elements. And so I do want to mention Spominary. Um, They have an incredible offer for Straight Talk listeners. Do you know that if you call Spominary at 514-695-5040, if you're in the Montreal area, and you mention Straight Talk with Sandra you get 15% off any beauty treatment or massage? Who wouldn't want that? Who wouldn't want that? Indeed. I know it sounds like a commercial, but (laughs) I'm telling you. There is no, for me, that's when I come up with my best ideas. Okay, so think about taking some time at the spa. We're going to hear about Anna Marie in the car. I cannot wait for that. I'm going to find out about my phone on the break, and we'll be right back with Straight Talk with Sandra Reich. life, your health, your network. You're listening to Voice America Health and Wellness. Spa Munari is a full-service wellness day spa located at the heart of West Island, Quebec. Submerge yourself in beauty with one of our many treatments, specially catered to your needs. We offer facials, manicures, pedicures, hair removal, massages, body treatments, and so much more. Enjoy our ultimate relaxation experience with our spa packages. We offer a men's menu as well. Call us today to book your next appointment at 514-695-5040 or visit us on the web at spamunari.com. That's 514-695-5040 or spamunari.com. Join the therapist who is affectionately known as the couple whisperer, Sandra Reich, on her famous couple retreats and change your life forever. Sandra offers couple retreats in beautiful locations several times a year that can radically change your love life. Couples describe her retreats as life-changing. Regain that loving feeling. Bring your intimacy to a new level and rediscover excitement and joy. Find out more at helpforanxietydepression.com or call 514-796-4357. We all want love and safety. Now you can have it. Call 514-796-4357 or helpforanxietydepression.com. Change your life forever with the latest cutting-edge products for home study treatment for anxiety, featuring the clinical director of the Montreal Center for Anxiety and Depression and host of Straight Talk, Sandra Reich. Sandra is joined by top therapist Georgia Dow in this revolutionary anxiety videos therapy series. Thousands of people have benefited from this scientifically proven treatment approach. Isn't it time you chose yourself? Visit anxiety-videos.com right now. That's anxiety-videos.com and change your life forever. A fresh look at today's health. Voice America Health & Wellness. You are listening to Straight Talk with Sandra Reich. To connect with the program today, please call 1-866-472-5792. Again, that's 1-866-472-5792. You may also send an email to info at helpforanxietydepression.com. Now, back to Straight Talk. Here's Sandra Reich. 
So we're back, and I, I have to say, Anna Maria left me with the weirdest thought, and I, I'm dealing with my phone on the commercial. Talk about neuroplasticity in action. Um, and I still, somewhere in the back of my mind, was waiting to come back on the air because I wanted a fresh answer. What on earth do you mean you practice neuroplasticity in your car, Anna Maria Tosco? You are one weird psychologist. No, let me tell you. Sassy psychologist. First of all, I don't know if you, you know when you're in the car and you, miss an exit and you're yeah. like oh I missed my exit yeah okay being in the car essentially has meditative properties you know you're focusing on yeah. something you know you're kind of in and out but yet you know your your full attention is there but there is a kind of meditative thing going on in the car I love it I love it I okay. almost find that doing this work in the car is better than me doing it when I'm not in the car so essentially to do this neuroplastic or to it to use neuroplasticity to your therapeutic benefit you have to do some things you mentioned a few you, you mentioned a few CBT techniques of course and that's a whole other show you know cognitive restructuring of course that's important if your therapist tells you to do it please do it practice it. And I want to acknowledge two other techniques, one of them being meditation and one of them being something called emotional rehearsal. So but I want to ask what you, do you in the car emotional rehearsal? I do emotional okay. rehearsal, but I want to ask you first Sandra, what do you think about meditation? Does meditation work for brain change or you know, what else, you know, yeah, what, what do you think about that? You know what, it's so funny. I think that meditation is the hottest thing in uh, psychology today. I think that we know without a doubt that it works. Um it's 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 amazing but okay here's the thing i think it takes a lot of discipline to do mm-hmm. it i struggle mm-hmm. um but there's no question i mean time magazine did a huge huge article on meditation it totally uh reframes your brain changes the way you think again coming back to the creative aspect of the brain that when we're doing that thing a lot of incredible free-floating thoughts so powerful i've done it i've done the long meditations an hour and a half meditations i've done the five minute meditations i'm very type a so I'm speaking for a lot of our audience uh, that a type A personality does not feel they have an hour and a half. You were asking me about if I enjoy pedicures. I'd rather <laughs> shoot myself than go get a pedicure. I don't understand that. Well, <laughs> that's because I'm very type A. So to me, it's an hour that I could be spending doing work. Of course. Um, and I represent a lot of people. So meditation is very counterintuitive for the type A personality because it's the thought is I'm going to give up time. But I know from real life and from research that actually that time that I give up will pay Pay, its back, pay itself back in spades. So that's my thought. Yes, yes, yes. What are your thoughts? On the coattails of that. Yes. We know what you said about the creative aspect of it. You know, you, you know, you can kind of go to another place. If I can give you the science behind it to just Please, fuel. I want that. To fuel people, you know, if, if they can meditate, essentially what happens is you're, you're in a different brainwave state. So you have beta brainwave states. And so there's high beta, there's medium beta, there's what, low okay, beta. Okay, people, yeah. beta. Yes, yeah, right. You're so essentially them. it's your analytical brain. And it's okay. your brain that actually is conducive to anxiety. And, but, and it is the kind of brainwave state that you're in most of the day, beta. You're not, you're, not, you're not sleepwalking. You're doing your thing. You're going to work, so you're in beta. Individuals who have anxiety are in higher beta, more analytical, more you know, type A stuff going on. So now what happens when you meditate is that you go into another brainwave state called alpha. And at that point, that's when, that's when your, kind of your anxiety goes away. That's when you're more relaxed. That's when you can actually focus on other things. So if you are trying to rewire your brain, using meditation is brilliant because you're taking yourself out of the analytical brain and you're putting yourself into this relaxed, beautiful, you know, non-anxious state so that solutions to your problems can actually come to you as opposed to being, you know, problem focused, problem focused, problem focused you know, and, and anxious, mm-hmm. when you leave that place and you get into a more relaxed state, that's when the solutions come. And that's what people really need to, to learn, you know, to motivate them to meditate or something like that. Okay. And I think that people get scared. Now, hold on a second. I'm still not hundred percent clear on the car. So I need yeah, to go no, back I didn't, for a We didn't get there. Sure. We didn't get the car. Get and there. I'm not finishing this interview without yeah. the car. <laughs> okay. So on the meditation, one yes. second, yes. on the meditation, I think that's where people get messed up because the idea of meditation is I'm going to clear my brain. I'm not going to think anything. And I think that's where for me, I was really turned off of it for a while but actually now you're bringing up the fact that free floating thought can be okay and I think that we need to get that out there like it's not always your brain is not always going to be clear look at your face right now no, but that's you're excited when, yes because when you're in that free flowing <laughs> place that's when the anxiety goes go that's when the anxiety goes away and that's when the solutions come so it's the good solu- for anxiety anxiety yes of okay. course oh she's excited no. her, <laughs> I wish you were streaming go go talk the, the solutions that come to you when you're in a more relaxed state are the solutions you're looking for you the mind that created <laughs> the mind you know this quote apparently it's Buddha 
but then I read somewhere else that it wasn't. Anyway, the mind that created the problem cannot find the solution. You have to get yourself into another another brain state. Okay, another so brain now state. we need to hear about the car. Okay. Because you're practicing this. You believe in this, Anna Maria. So take yeah. people through how do you integrate this into your life? Okay. So, so what are you doing in the car? One of the things, I'm, so we talked about meditation. The other thing I wanted to bring up is something called emotional rehearsal. Okay. So in order to change your patterns, it is a fake it till you make it technique. Don't care. Still doing it. So it's the idea of can you feel what it feels like to have what it is that you desire. Mm -hmm. So if you desire that relationship, if you desire a new pattern of thought, if you desire a new job, um, you know, what does it feel like to be there? Because here's the thing, if you don't have what you want, let's say you don't, you're not in that relationship that you want, you have these thoughts that are not helping you that, you know, he's not coming around, I'm never going to attract anybody, nobody likes me or whatever. So if you do emotional rehearsal, you put yourself in, in that version of you who's in a relationship. And I know some people are like, what is this? It's like, what am I going to use my, I'm going to fantasize. I'm going to use my imagination. Guess what? Yes. Yes, he will. So you're in the car fantasizing? I'm in the car. (laughs) I like to call it. Getting hot. Getting hot in here. Keep it PG, Sandra. Okay, I'm trying. I'm trying. (laughs) I'm sorry. The bartender comes out once in a while. Yeah, of course. I love it. I love it. It's my favorite part. But you use the word fantasy, not me. I did. But it is a kind of daydreaming to the point where you have to put yourself in the shoes of that new version of yourself. Okay. Why? Because then those healthier thoughts will come to you. If you put yourself in that person who has that new job, if you put yourself in that person who's in the relationship they want... Um, you essentially are creating the feeling and the thoughts in that future of that future you in the present you. So what are you doing and when you're in the car? You're so that's imagining it. So, it? Yeah. So I'm imagining it. I'm like, you know, if, for example, I wanted to, uh, you know, we have the sassy blog, for example, and I wanted to expand and, you know, I wanted to follow in the footsteps of Sandra Reich and do a radio show in the future or something like this. Essentially, I'm going there. I'm like, what are my, what's my resistance? And you and I spoke about this before. I was telling Sandra how much I admire her. She's my beast because she talks to people. She gets stuff done. She gets wonderful guests on her show. And I like admire, you. And I, well, thanks. Oh, I admire her very, very much. So there's, there's something that's going on with Sandra when she, when she g- talks to these, I mean, these, these physicians, these doctors, these psychologists, these experts, you know, uh, these celebrities, you know, there's something going on in Sandra's brain that, and, and that allow her to go up and talk to them, for example, right? And I was telling her, and listen, I, I guess I'm telling the free world right now that I have insecurities there. So I know that in my career, I'm going to have to let that go and I'm going to have to rehearse a new version of myself with healthier thoughts. Because what are my thoughts right now? My thoughts are, oh my God, I can't go over there. Look who that, that's a famous person. Or that's, a, but they're not going to want to come on my blog or they're not going to want me to write an article about them. But no, those are very limiting thoughts that I have to work so, on. So, okay, but I just really want to break it down. So you're in the car yeah. and with that example, are you imagining yourself going up to this person and asking them to write for the blog? What are you doing? Well, you have to have a, like a, a certain degree of emotional intelligence too to know how am I feeling in this moment? When I'm feeling scared to walk up to somebody, what am I feeling? I'm feeling unworthy. I'm feeling insecure. I'm feeling like, you know, I'm not good enough. This kind of thing, right? Right. So essentially what I'm what I have to practice is what would it feel like to walk up to this person um, and be confident? Well, I'd be looking at them in the eyes. I'm, you know, shoulders back, head up. What are the kinds of things I would say? You know, um, and I, I also. So have what's to one ch- you did recently in the car? Well, actually, this very one. This very the radio one. show. Like, yeah, no, no. Um, the idea the talking of, to yeah, somebody. like well, ex- expanding my, um, you know, in my in my career, talking to people I might be intimidated about or whatever. Okay. So essentially, putting so, myself in this okay. in in this confident Anna Maria. This confident, you know, you know, you can do it. And essentially, there's a lot of CBT going on as well. And to put myself there, what would it feel like if I were her? Is this not visualization? It is. It's, it's a, visualization. Visualization with emotion, though. So the emotion is like the, it's the color, isn't it? It's important, the yes. emotion. Yeah. So it's what would I feel like? Yeah. If I did this. Yeah. And again, and to bring to, to bring this back to neuroplasticity, essentially the idea of me practicing something different, if I can practice that feeling, if I can practice those thoughts, I'm, you know, I'm going to get there essentially. So figure what better way in the car, what are you doing? You're either making phone calls or whatever. 
Obs- also, what I want to bring up too, obsessing. You know when you have a problem or something, and I don't know about you, but when I have a problem, I have to have a conversation with someone. I'm obsessing over it. I'm like, okay, this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. <laughs> and, say, and I'm like, I'm a, kind of obsessing over this anxiety-provoking thing. Why can't we obsess about something else? Why can't we obsess about what we're looking forward to, what we're fantasizing about? You know when you're blow-drying your hair, when you're in the shower, when you're in the car, why can't you obsess about those positive things? Because what if I told you doing that will actually change your brain and change your life for the better? Come on. So, and, and I know that you can, it will change your life for the better. And I know that you can apply these things even within meditation. Yeah. So you can actually do like a meditation of you're living the life that you've dreamt of. Mm-hmm. And you can start to, this is a little bit where it could be another show we do. It's a little bit about manifesting your reality, exactly. which is another level to this. Yes. And, you know, it's funny because this has become very mainstream scientific psychological research, but it used to be considered pretty woo woo exactly. and out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now we know energetically that this is, you know, and, you know, athletes do this and lots of people do this kind of stuff. And people who are really good at this create the lives they want. We are always, um, and by the way, the you know, if I could say that the beginnings of cognitive behavioral therapy, which is a scientifically based therapy, were rooted in constructionism, which was a uh, belief that you were creating your life, you're co-creating your life. So, like. We say in French, plus que ça change, plus que c'est la même chose. So for the people who don't live in Quebec, more things are different, the more they're the same. We're coming back to something that the great minds of philosophy, years, thousands and thousands of years have come up with, that, you know, again, uh, cognitive behavioral came out of these philosophies, came out of the fact that your mind creates its reality. Um, We're going to take a break, but just imagine that if you believe the world is a suspicious place and a dangerous place, what do you create? Yep. A suspicious and dangerous place if you believe people are inherently good what do you create if you believe people are inherently bad what do you create so you know my i always like on the commercial break to have our listeners think about something and i you know ask yourself what do you think about the world what do you think about men what do you think about women what do you think about your body what do you think about your life because what you're believing and telling your brain is what your brain is going to create right Anna Marie absolutely Pascal? and I, I can give you examples oh when we come back she's going to give examples we will be right back with straight talk with sandra reach your life your health your network you're listening to voice america health and wellness Change your life forever with the latest cutting-edge products for home study treatment for anxiety. Featuring the clinical director of the Montreal Center for Anxiety and Depression and host of Straight Talk, Sandra Reich. Sandra is joined by top therapist Georgia Dow in this revolutionary anxiety videos therapy series. Thousands of people have benefited from this scientifically proven treatment approach. Isn't it time you chose yourself? Visit anxiety-videos.com right now. That's anxiety-videos.com and change your life forever. Spa Munari is a full-service wellness day spa located at the heart of West Island, Quebec. Submerge yourself in beauty with one of our many treatments, specially catered to your needs. We offer facials, manicures, pedicures, hair removal, massages, body treatments, and so much more. Enjoy our ultimate relaxation experience with our spa packages. We offer a men's menu as well. Call us today to book your next appointment at 514-695-504. Or visit us on the web at spamunari.com. That's 514-695-5040 or spamunari.com. Join the therapist who is affectionately known as the couple whisperer, Sandra Reich, on her famous couple retreats and change your life forever. Sandra offers couple retreats in beautiful locations several times a year that can radically change your love life. Couples describe her retreats as life-changing. Regain that loving feeling. Bring your intimacy to a new level and rediscover excitement and joy. Find out more at helpforanxietydepression.com or call 514-796-4357. We all want love and safety. Now you can have it. Call 514-796-4357 or helpforanxietydepression.com. Your life, your health, your network. This is Voice America Health & Wellness. Do 
You are listening to Straight Talk with Sandra Reich. To connect with the program today, please call 1-866-472-5792. Again, that's 1-866-472-5792. You may also send an email to info at helpforanxietydepression.com. Now, back to Straight Talk. Here's Sandra Reich. We are back, and, you know, I, I love having Anna Maria Tosco on the phone. She works at the center. I must say I'm very, very, very proud. I might be mentioning that because I'm so proud. Uh, before we go any further, Anna Maria, like if people, like, want to find you, how do they find you, first of all, uh, both in terms of the center and in terms of Sassy Psychologist? What is Sassy Psychologist, by the way? Um, so Sassy Psychologist is a blog that I needed to co-create essentially my my one of my friends from high school a dear dear friend who's a a a brilliant web designer and and creator she helped develop the sassy psychologist it's a blog www.sassypsychologist.com you can definitely reach us there email us read our stuff share our stuff give us suggestions whatever it's a blog i needed to create because i needed to express myself clearly look at me i'm a little dramatic eh? i needed to express myself outside of with my clients and outside of my you know my students in that kind of very controlled environment i needed to kind of go crazy and talk about psychological concepts so that's why I created it so you can find me there or so uh, they, they go to sassypsychologist.com yep okay and if they want to come see you at the clinic what do they do okay at the Montreal Center for Anxiety and Depression please call 777-4530 in the area code 514-514-777-4530 and you can inquire about uh, you know my availabilities beautiful well, yeah. people are so lucky to get you my god thank you Sandra I, you are part of my original four people I started the clinic with and I'm honored to, let me say it publicly so everyone can hear honored to have you aboard you are a dream you flatter me Sandra Reese. if it wasn't for you it wouldn't have happened so. well it's a great uh, great chemistry between us yeah. um, and this has been a big part of the chemistry is we were very drawn to each other because we both believe in this so before the break you were talking about practice so practice talk to yeah. me about practice well okay so essentially you know, you were mentioning the fact that, um, you know, you can kind of create what you're thinking about. I want to reach out to the skeptics a little bit, Sandra Reese. Go, that. please, go for okay, it. This I want to reach out segment. to the skeptics because they're like, okay, okay, they're talking about law of attraction. They're talking about, you know, all that stuff. First of all, there is some scientific backing behind that. But let me, like, let me, I want to talk to the skeptics for a, se- for a second. So if you are, for example, looking for a job and you have all these thoughts of, oh my God, nothing's coming to me. Oh my gosh, I'm not, uh, I'm not getting what I want I'll never get what I want I'll never make my money I'll never be happy I'll never have a good boss whatever you get the point so essentially what's going to happen when you're in that mindset so it's not just oh you know I, I I create what I think about essentially when you're walking down the street you will not see the help wanted sign okay if you are Um, a person seeking a relationship and you're like, oh, nobody's around. I'm not attracted to anybody. Nobody's attracted to me. Let's say you're in a social uh, event, a gathering, a bar, a party, whatever. You are actually not going to pay any attention to the person who's looking at you from across the room because you've put yourself in a particular mindset. So again, this is why if you want to change this, if you want to change your reality, you have to call yourself out on your bad patterns and you have to work on them religiously though. I stress again, this is not easy work. This is very, very hard work. It's like, again, learning an instrument, learning a dance, whatever. Um, And it's gonna be tough. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It is really tough. And so why should people do it, Anna Maria? You know what? It, like, I don't like tough things. Mm-hmm. Like, you're making it sound really hard. So like, why? I'm going to play the role of that person yeah. listening going, I, this is not appealing to me. Yeah. I don't like things that are very hard. So what, what do I do with that? So, so essentially, I think people only get there when they've reached rock bottom and they basically say to themselves, I don't, I, I don't want to do this anymore. How badly do I want it? Yes. So it's like so. It's almost you go on a, a, a regime, a, a diet of sorts, or to get healthy eating, or going to the gym. You only keep that good habit when you've hit rock bottom. I hear you. You know. So again, with this stuff, I'm not about getting my victims out of victim mode. With this stuff, this stuff is you have to be out of victim mode to start this stuff. And can this really, like, again? So yeah, you have to work hard, and you can get you change your life. Can it really help my life? I mean, I know the answer. It really helped mine, but. Can it really change your life? Like, why don't we give an example yeah. from your life? Oh, yeah. You said you were a hot mess. We're getting to the end of the show. Why don't you take us I into always, that before we sign so off? I How did you change your life? I apologize to my wonderful, wonderful fiance. He knows that I bring him up sometimes when I'm 
doing this kind of thing. Um, but yes, I, I always tell him that I've, I created him because essentially what happened, I was a hot mess. I was you know, chronically single. Like, honestly, no hope for me. You could ask like my friends. Uh, they'll vouch. They'll basically say, yeah, boy, you are in trouble. Let me tell you. And I, I kind of look back and go, how did I do it? My gosh, because now I have a beautiful fiance, a home, a child working on our family. Like this is a complete 180. I'm not kidding you. And the only difference is that I, you know, went to the, that those um, those workshops on meditation. Okay. I started to believe in neuroplasticity, and I have to tell you, that's when things started to change for me. Okay. I hit rock bottom. I wanted to find a theory that worked for me. I followed, you know, Dr. Joe Dispenza, you know, plug, I guess, uh, <laughs> around the U.S., and I learned how to meditate, and it was amazing. So I believe that through that change... I created a relationship. I created a family. I created a home. Uh, and six years ago, you would have asked me where, I, where I'd be. I would never have dreamed that I'd be here. So you changed your life. You changed your love life. Sorry, I'm pointing at you. Please. It's terrible. <laughs> She's looking at my finger like, what are you doing? I don't know what I'm doing. I apologize. Um, I got to work I on that. That might be a bad habit right I there. I got to work on. I don't um, I, I wish we would have streamed because I was like sticking my finger in her chest. I apologize. Um <laughs> But you, I, I guess I'm excited. You changed your romantic life. You changed everything, and you're living the dream. And that's why people need to do it. And, yes. uh, you know, we're out of time, Anna Maria, but I cannot thank you enough for coming on the show. I really can't. I think that people need to hear so much more about this, and I hope you'd be willing to come back. Oh, my God, of course. We have so much fun. And thank you, Sandra, your inspiration. Now with the radio show, with all of your listeners, you're just expanding, and everybody is so lucky oh. to have you here. So thank you. Well, it's always a pleasure with you, Anna Maria. Uh, before we sign enough. I also want to thank, again, Spa Maneri for making this show possible. The owner of that spa wants people to live their best lives, and we're very grateful to her. And I'd especially like to thank our listeners for listening to Straight Talk with Santa Risha. I'd like to invite them to all come back next week. If you're interested in our retreats, therapy, or any of the things Anna Maria mentioned today uh, on this show or on previous shows, go to www.helpforanxietydepression.com And also, if you go on, did you know this? If you go on straighttalksandarish.com and put a a forward slash uh, radio gifts. Did you know you get all sorts of freebies and wonderful things? You should I can, go. I can Anna get Marie. stuff. Amazing cool. stuff. Like really good <laughs> stuff. Our previous guests have left some amazing stuff. Very cool. Um, check out also the Facebook Straight Talk with Sandra Reich. Uh, feel free to leave a question for me or for Anna Maria. And by the way, remember to like the page. You can hear this show or any previous show as a podcast on my website, straighttalksandareach.com, on the podcast app of your iPhone and on iTunes under Straight Talk with Sandra Reich. Um, feel free to drop me a comment or a question at info at help for anxietydepression.com. If you are a professional and you're looking for keynote speakers or training on anxiety, depression, neuroplasticity, emotional regulation, or living a purposeful life, remember that I'm your source for evidence-based practice and education. My name is Sandra Reich, and I promise I'll help you learn to live your best life again next Thursday, same time, same channel. In the meanwhile, this is Straight Talk with Sandra Reich. Keep your eyes on the stars. Thank you for listening to Straight Talk with Sandra Reich. We hope you've enjoyed today's show and we'll tune in again next Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Time on the Voice America Health and Wellness Channel. Now, go live your best life.